This is a production of PBS Charlotte. The following episode of Charlotte Cooks is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. Hi there, and welcome to this episode of Charlotte Cooks. I'm Chef Pamela Roberts, and joining me here in my kitchen today is I've got Chef Chris Shuda from Carowinds with me, and we're going to make some funnel cakes, aren't we? We are. We're going to do some great things with it today. Great. So funnel cakes are more than just funnel cakes. I know that we always go to the park and grab them because they're irresistible. Correct. But we're going to do something different with them today. I'm going to show you how diversified you can get with the batter and okay. with the actual breading mixture of it. Excellent. So how do you make a funnel cake batter? Well, it's very easy. Simple right. ingredients. We can come right over to here. Okay. So we have some different types of flours. Okay. We have a bread flour. All right. We have a pastry flour. Now, why are we using bread flour and pastry flour instead of all-purpose flour? You want the glutinous of the bread flour, okay. and then you want the nice airiness of the pastry flour. So you okay. get a nice crispy crust, okay. a nice airy center. And that wouldn't happen with an all-purpose flour? All-purpose flour, no. It, does, it has too much of a um, denser okay. uh, feel to it, okay. uh, and it just doesn't puff up, and when it does, you get more of a stringiness and you get a okay. crispiness. Oh, got it. All right. So. And so next we're adding? Powdered sugar. Powdered sugar. Now, not regular granulated not sugar. Not regular granulated sugar because this cooks so quickly. You're going to okay. cook it in such a high heat that the uh, regular granulated sugar will uh, heavy it down, mm -hmm. and then you'll have granulars of it inside. It won't melt. It won't melt. That's Okay. Yep, that's and that's okay. a key. We don't want that grittiness in there, do we? That grittiness is just not really nice. No. And we've got a little bit of? We have a little bit of uh, cinnamon, and okay. from here you can add nutmeg. You can add all kinds of other stuff. Okay. And then we have baking powder. Okay. And that goes in there. So just just mix all this together and you can use this as your base. So there's no eggs in this one. Mm -hmm. um, you can, at this point, you can add milk or you can add water, whichever okay. you choose. Uh, milk will give it a much better flavor. So from here, you can take this and mm -hmm. actually just put it into a bag and keep it in your pantry. So Excellent. when you have family and friends or gatherings, you can just add milk to it and go right from there. Just like the instant mix? Correct. I am going to add a little bit of vanilla to it. You can add almond extract to it. If you want to do a citrus one, you can add okay. some citrus. So any extract you can add to it. So we're going to add some vanilla to it. All right. And then we're going to add our milk. Okay. Now you want to add this in slowly. You don't want to add this in all at one time. Okay. You want to work it to where it gets kind of lumpy. You want it kind of like a, you know, don't forget your pancake batter okay. that has your little lumps in it. it. It'll help in it. Okay. So you're looking for a little bit thicker than pancake batter. Okay. They're about the same. And then from here, what you were going to do is you take these squeeze bottles and, or you can use a pastry bag or something like that. But mm -hmm. I find squeeze bottles are the easiest things to do. They you really let this sit easy. for a couple of minutes. You can also have, make this up ahead of time mm -hmm. and keep it in your refrigerator. Okay. So then now all you and have just to leave it in your little squeeze bottle. Yep. Just like this. Just like in this. In the refrigerator. In the refrigerator. Put a little label on it so everybody knows what it is. Yep. Don't squeeze it into your coffee. In about a day. <laughs> this is good for about a day. Okay. You can use that for about a day right. in there. And then um, what you do, I like using cast iron. Uh, it holds the heat in the best, especially when you're frying some, uh, some items. Mm -hmm. I like to use a good quality oil. You want to use something that has a higher heat because you're going to be frying anywhere between 375 to 400. I like to use an infrared gun. Some people like to have those ones that stick in the side there right. and hold their temperature, but mm -hmm. I like these. They're a little bit more modern, easy. Just kind of check the top of it. Right now we're sitting at about 365, 370. We're doing pretty good. Okay. So you take your little squeeze bottle and you just do little circles and they puff right on up. So that's kind of like a free form one. Mm -hmm. If you want to have more formity, more uh, like if you're doing like an appetizer or something or where you, you just wanted small ones. You can use hearts, you can use stars, you oh, can use neat. you can get very like creative. Those little shapes they use for eggs. Exactly. Oh how yeah. fun. So you can okay. do the same thing with that and just pour it right on the inside. Okay. Let it come out. Now it only takes about sixty or ninety seconds. Once you start seeing some brownness going on, you get want to get a grab a pair of tongs. Mm -hmm. And you just flip it over. Gently flip it over. That's it. But the reason we're doing it in such a high heat, if you do it too low, they get very greasy. Yeah. So you just want a really quick fry on these. And that's true just about anything you fry, folks, is it, your oil has to be hot or else the product will absorb the oil instead of cooking in the oil. And that's and one of the secrets to making it not greasy. So you take your, make sure it doesn't stick to the side. You pull it off. You got one there. Oh, he's so cute. And then you can just start another one. Go back in that and, 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 and with that one. So there we go. Fry them up. Okay. Work. So that's the basics of uh -huh. how to do a funnel cake. You can make this entire meal 
with one frying pan. All right. Mm, I can smell the vanilla cooking. It smells great. Puff up, just like that. Oh, they're so cute. And you can finish this with powdered sugar, some sauces, okay. whatever you want. Toppings, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries. We've done s'mores. We've done all kinds of toppings on there. You can get so imaginative. We're going to do a savory one later. So yeah. what are we going to do next? We're going to start off with our appetizer. Okay. And that is our my play on shrimp and grits. Shrimp and grits. Shrimp and okay. Grits. So here we've got a few shrimp. Yep. So we're going to use those, but what else? You're going to use. You're going to do something with our grits. We've got some stone ground grits here. I do. These but are. What are you going to do with those? What I'm going to do with these is I want to do grits, but if you use this in the breader, mm -hmm. it becomes very hard and crunchy. I'm going to turn mm -hmm. this down just a little bit. Um, so what I like to do is I like to put these in a, in a coffee grinder okay. or a spice grinder. Okay. And oh, that's on. So we put those in there. We're going to turn them into. More of a powdery, more of a flour is what okay. we're going to do with it. So just put them in there and grind them up. Just grind them up. You don't have to cook them. You don't have to do anything. We're going to cook okay. those in the oil is what we're going to do. Okay. All right. Take that off there. And it turns into this little powder. Of what oh, it yeah, turns nice into. and fine. Not nice and fine. Okay. So we'll take this. We're going to put it into our bowl. Now, earlier we made the funnel cake batter. But we made a dry mix with it first. Yeah, we didn't mix it with the liquid. So we didn't mix it with, that's what this is right here. So this is just a dry powdered mix, not with the vanilla, not with the milk. milk. But it does have the sugar in it. And if with shrimp, it works perfect. Gives it a little sweetness to it. People think, oh, is that coconut? No, it's not. It's just <laughs> this. So this has always been my little secret ingredient. So very easy. Just kind of stir it up. Just kind of incorporate those in there. So this is going to be our, like our breading for... Fried shrimp. Yeah, that's exactly okay. it. You can, you can take this. You can also use this uh, for other proteins. You can use this for other uh, uh, items that you can do this Chicken in. Chicken fingers. Uh, also, you can use this with vegetables, too. It works. Okay. Yep. Oh, nice. Yep. Okay. So you don't want to... The other thing is whenever you start um, breading, usually people tell you to pat these dry. For this procedure, we don't. We want a little bit of wetness for this stuff to stick to it. So we take our nice shrimp. You can use tail on. You can use tail off, whichever one you like. Um, and all you're going to do is just dredge these simply into this mixture. And we mm -hmm. just drop them into our oil. So these will take just a couple of minutes. Okay. But the nice thing about this is what is on the outside of this, when we use it with the flour, when we use it with the baking soda, it gives it baking powder, it gives it such a crunchy flavor. Mm -hmm. And like I said, everybody always asks me, well, what kind of coconut's in there? Or what kind of bread? I'm like, there is no coconut in it. But it tastes like coconut. So that's the sweetness. It's that, the sweetness, yeah. That's coming from the powdered sugar that's in there. And these, these will just take just a couple of minutes. So you don't okay. have to constantly flip them. We just want them to be golden brown and cooked all the way through. All right. While this is going, we can actually uh, talk about this dipping sauce that's going to go with it. Okay. Yep. This brown butter bacon dipping sauce. This is very easy sauce to make. Uh, if you want to grab those lemons over there and sure. the, the scallions that come with it. There you go. So these are fine. We're going to wash those. There you are. So simple, easy. You take some fresh bacon and you start chopping it up and you put it into your pan first and you kind of take the uh, take the fat out and get that uh, nice and crispy. You can leave the fat in from the bacon and at that point we're going to add our butter. And then once you add your butter into your pan, you're going to let that cook and you're going to let it start browning. And by the means of browning, how can you tell when your butter is brown? It's going to smell like nuts. Yeah. It's going to have a nice aroma to it. It's going to have a beautiful uh, bouquet coming out of it. And it's not really going to be burning. So right to the point of when it gets just warm, uh, you'll see some brown specks starting to show up. Mm -hmm. Now the bacon at that time is out of the pan. It's in a separate container. So as soon as that happens, what we're going to do is we're going to add the bacon back to it. All right, so our shrimp here is nice and golden brown. We'll take, pull those out. We've got a nice little crispy outside to them. This one especially, you can see the grits on the outside of oh, it. Yeah. It comes out really nicely. Shine up. But this is my play on shrimp and grits. Uh, you know, you don't have to take long. You don't have to cook them, uh, all the grits. Just something different to play with. And it's a nice way of using up all that funnel cake batter that you've made and you've got hanging out in your pantry. So exactly. use it as a breading. Yep. I like it. This works really good on squash. Uh, gives it a oh, great yeah. sweetness to it. I Absolutely it wonderful. So we have our... Let me uh, get you a plate. You want to plate that yes, up? Yes, please. Let's plate okay. that up. If you, you want to put like three of those on that while I finish the sauce here. Sure. Sure. Let me grab that. So we'll, uh, we'll get this warmed up a little bit. And I like to finish this 
with some fresh lemon, especially with, with seafood or okay. anything like that. It brightens, gives it a little bit of brightness, gives it that acidity uh, that you need in a sauce, especially something that's this heavy. You have so much fat in it uh, with the butter and the bacon. So you want to have just something that, that'll freshen it up. So simple to just be careful. If this gets too hot, if you add this to it, it'll actually splatter up. So you don't want to get that too hot uh, on the outside because then you'll have a nice big flame coming all over the place. So just mix that in a little bit. And then of course, any fresh herbs, fresh scallions, fresh chives. You hear that going off there. So if you added that, it's kind of like mm -hmm. adding water to, to oil. That's kind of what you're mm -hmm. doing here. So it's nice and warm, turn that off. And there's our little, dish, our for little the dish for the sauce. Our sauce is ready. Add that to the sauce right there. Oh yeah. How nice you can add that. Uh, you put that on a nice platter. That's a you can beautiful put it appetizer. In a big bowl right there. Now the one thing you do want, you want to be able to keep the sauce warm somewhere. So if mm -hmm. you have a little crock pot or something like that that has a little candle mm -hmm. underneath it just to keep it warm, because if once that sauce does get cold, it will start coagulating it'll, back into butter. Yeah. And then it'll solidify. But then you just heat it up again, and, you can, and yeah. yeah, it'll so. be fine. All right. So I'm going to set that right here while we finish up our next dish. What's our next dish? Oh, the next dish. So we have a lot of work to do on this one. So this is gonna, the one I've been waiting for. This is the one that we've been talking about and going okay, back and forth. Back on, um, we can probably set that over okay. there. All right. All right. So we are going to do a play on chicken and waffles. Oh, she's been dying to say that all day. Chicken and waffles. Yes. So what we are doing uh, is we're taking our chicken tenders and we're actually going to make a funnel cake, but it's a savory funnel cake. We're okay. going to add the same batter that we have and okay. we're actually going to add some herbs and things like that to okay. it uh, to make it a little bit more savory. Okay. So we're going to start off with our brine. So okay. what is a brine? A brine is something you soak something in. Right. So when you soak things in it, especially a protein, mm -hmm. uh, what happens with it is that the protein actually starts absorbing some of the flavor and things like that and makes it not, you don't have to add as much salt at the end, you don't have right. to do all that kind of stuff. It adds flavor. So the best thing to do is just take some water, mm -hmm. grab some easy seasoning mixes. You could find any kind of vinaigrette season, uh, right. mix or anything like that, package mix that you see, mix it all together. Put your protein in it. Put the chicken tenders that are, uh, you know, in it, and let it sit for up to 12 hours. Okay. Or overnight. Overnight it would be best. Mm -hmm. The following day, what we're going to do is we're going to make two kinds of mixtures to fry these in. So we're not going to bread them per se. We're going to actually dip them in a tempura batter that gives it something more, so it gives it crispiness. Yummy. And then on top of that, we're going to uh, add a flour mixture or the little bit of the funnel cake to give it even more crispiness. Okay. Okay. So we have our brine. We kind of put that together. They've been sitting overnight. So we're going to take this mixture here. And what we have here is all-purpose flour. And we're making our tempura. A little bit of baking soda and a little bit of baking powder. We're going to mix this together. And to make a tempura, what you want to add is you want to add some soda. That's what we're going to add to. So club soda. Now why would you choose club soda versus a regular water? Uh, you want the fizziness, that's what reacts with okay. the baking soda and the baking powder that okay. creates that crispiness, that creates that uh, batter feel to it, but it also gives it uh, a little bit more body than what water okay. would do. So we'll mix that. So that's our first okay. portion. So all-purpose flour for our breader. Uh, and some panko breadcrumbs. Also at this time, you can also take the same stuff that you have actually in your brine, which is the Italian seasoning and some of the ranch seasoning. So it's all there. That's going to be tasty. It's going to be very tasty. So you have, so you're layering. So yes. you have layers of flavor going all the way through. Uh, so we brine it, so there's that same flavor on the inside. Then we have the same flavor that we actually use in our breader here. So we take our chicken tenders, and so we put those in there. Uh, you want to use like one to two ounce ones. If you have some really big ones, um, you can, but you want to cut them in half, especially if you're doing it at home, because uh, you don't want to be frying forever. You just want to fry for about, you know, four or five minutes. Right. The smaller uh, they are, the quicker they cook. Correct. Yep, the crunchier they are. Mm-hmm. So we're mixing our, into our tempura batter. So this would be like the egg mixture that you would put in right. uh, for that side. Take those and you put them right into 
the other mixture. I'm going to do about three of these, okay. maybe four. So we just crunch them around and get them all yep. coated. Oh, this is going to be so good. Oh, it's very tasty. I can't wait. Very See? tasty. When they get all coated, all right? Yep. And at this point, we're going to get our handy dandy thermometer again. I love this thing. <laughs> so we're a little warm, so we're going to turn it down just a little bit. But we'll be okay because we're going to be setting some pretty cold chicken. Yep. Just be careful setting it in there. And the other great thing about these is these, just like our shrimp, you can bread these up ahead of time mm -hmm. and you can put them in the freezer. And when you have people come over or the kids are hungry in the afternoon, you have a quick, easy snack for them. They do cook up pretty darn quick they too, do. don't they? They absolutely do. So while those are frying, mm -hmm. we have a sauce that goes on top of these. So the sauce is actually very, very easy. So what I like to do is I like to find a prepared chicken gravy, your favorite kind, whatever you, you like to You can buy eat. them in the grocery store in the jar. You can make you your bring, own. You can make your own. Yep. You can bring some home from the restaurant. Exactly. <laughs> Left you could find chicken Volute, gravy. if you know what that is. Yeah. Some people know what that is. So we're going to heat that up a little bit. We're going to get that going up pretty hot. At that time, you want to take a little bit of honey. So this honey, I heard, was grown just around the corner. It's grown right outside. Oh, this wow. is our Greenway honey. So it's really we have a, nice. Literally a taste of Charlotte right here. It's, it is really a taste of Charlotte. So you're going to take a little bit of honey. You're just going to stir it right into there. Oh, I like to put a couple. And if you want it sweeter, put a little extra. Nobody ever said it has to be perfect. Recipes to me are guidelines. They're not. They're suggestions. They're suggestions. That's exactly it. So once we have that going in there, some chilies, Ooh, a little, little bit jalapenos. of heat on top. We got red ones and green ones today. Jalapenos. So they are. Put those right in there, and that's it. That's your sauce, semi homemade. That's it. So just with a little addition of some homemade ingredients. So our chicken tenders are done. Uh, we're going to make sure that those are cooked. You want to take an internal thermometer mm -hmm. on the inside of those to cook those about 165 degrees. Yes. You don't want any rawness going on in there. Not at all. And if they, if they get brown in the, in the pan here and they're not done, y'all, put them in the oven and finish cooking them there. That way Great they're not going to burn on you. Great. And you're going to be able to cook it the rest of the way on the inside. So we're going to make sure that that is done. We've got our We have our ready. sauce here. Our chicken tenders are ready. So now we get okay. to the fun part. All right. We get to make funnel cake. So I have some great chopped herbs, and I just like to add that right to it. Okay. I don't add any salt. Oh, so to this it. is going to be an herbal funnel cake. Yeah. Mm. So think of chicken and waffles, and what there's a sweetness to you it. You said right? waffles. I did say waffles. <laughs> I know, but there's a sweetness to it. So we want to leave okay. the sweetness in it, but you want to add a savory note to it also. Right. Once again, it's about layering flavors. It's isn't about it? layering flavors all day. Okay, so we're just okay. going to make one, a couple small ones here. So you do a nice tight little circles. Yep. You can do zigzags. You can do circles. You can, like I said, put them into the mold. Just anything so that it just folds over each other and connects. So yeah, basket weave if you're really good at it. But you um, got to do that over and under, and that's kind of hard. Yeah, I don't know how. To, <laughs> but like I said, from this point, you can use a mold if you wanted to, mm -hmm. or just free form it. We're going to give that just a couple of minutes. Okay. So as you see, the uh, the herbs are still staying nice and green because mm -hmm. uh, we're cooking them really quick, and they are coming right on out. They're going to be staying nice okay. and crunchy. So I like little small ones. I don't like to do big, large ones because they take forever and um, to cook, and they sometimes the outside is already done, the inside is not ready to go. So I like little, little ones like that. We're going to let those sit off to the side. Okay. Let those warm. Get warm. And so we're going to plate this up. All right. So we have our sauce. Okay. Take a couple of these little guys here. Put them right down in the center. Let's see. Let's do three of them since we got three chicken tenders. Take that right through there. Put wow. Two like that. Let's stay there. And then we just take our sauce. Now you can pour this on the bottom of it. You can do this uh, to the top of it. I like to do it right over the top. You're going to kill me with these jalapenos. Oh, it's <laughs> It's going to be a beautiful flavor. Ooh, look at that. Let me just take it, put it around the outside. And the flavors in this 
Oh, it looks lovely. Just took very simple. Now you don't have to use chicken tenders. You can use fried chicken for this too. There's your dish. So you have one more dish for us. I have one more dish. While so, I fix this one, why don't you tell us about that next dish? So this have, is our dessert, isn't it? Yes. So all, we're going full circle all the way around. So in the beginning, we made funnel cake that was with the sugar and everything like that. So at this time, we're going to take the same mixture we had here, okay? Same mixture that we have. And I like to make uh, dumplings with this. Okay. And what I do is I take, if you don't have fresh berries in season, what you want to do is you want to grab uh, some frozen berries. Uh, from here you can also do apples, you can add marshmallows, you can add all kinds of sweetness things into here. Just anything, anything you pretty you much want. Chocolate? Yeah, chocolate would work very well and actually that's what we're doing with our sauce. So uh, our sauce that we use for our dumplings when we're going to uh, get ready to plate these up. It's a very easy sauce. Uh, it is there you go. corn syrup, white chocolate, and a little bit of heavy cream. You put all those ingredients into a pan. And you just kind of warm them up a little bit till it melts. And once it melts, that's what you get. It's lovely. You can use, this is white chocolate. Now you can use dark chocolate. Um, you can use a mixture of both. You can use butterscotch. Uh, you can use caramel. Uh, so there's all kinds of things that you can do with it. So once it melts, you're pretty much done with it, and we're going to pull it off. Okay. All right, so we have our batter here made up with our flour and our funnel cake mix, and we just added uh, nothing but frozen berries to it. You can use fresh, but I find that frozen has a little bit more flavor to it this time of okay. year especially. Oh, yeah, especially in the winter. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but having this in the spring or in the summertime, you can absolutely use fresh berries. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do, we're just going to drop them right on the inside there. Kind of free forming it. We're not. There's really no, no particular shape or size you want to do with this. Just throw and them. Because up. you have the berries in there, it will pop on you. So be very careful adding these things to your oil. You can hear it. Yeah, there is a moisture factor in here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the water and all the uh, moisture is trying to escape. Put a couple more in there. And these you can make way up ahead of time, uh, and you can keep and just warm them back up in the oven. Um, they make a great dessert. These are very good with a little bit of uh, uh, ice cream over the top. Um, Could you open them up and make like an ice cream sandwich out of them? Uh, nice if you made them big enough, enough? yes. Okay. And the other nice thing about these, if there's a little bit of dough on the inside left over that has a little bit of gooiness to it, you're okay because there's no, no egg eggs. In it. Yeah. Right. So I would recommend if you're doing to do this entire meal, is start backwards. Mm -hmm. Always eat dessert. dessert first. Yeah, go with dessert first, so that way you don't have any of those flavors coming out, and you end up with the shrimp where you don't have. Some mm -hmm. people may have allergies back and right. forth. So, yep. So those are done. I'm drain those a little bit. There's really no form to them. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. A lot of people sometimes call these beignets, donuts, however you want to call them. Fritters. Fritters, dumplings. Dumplings. Just call them good and eat them. Good. Just don't call me late for dinner, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So those go there. Okay. We have our plate. All right. So do you want to put sauce down first? Or we do you want to put, put a little bit of sauce on the bottom so they kind okay. of stick to it. All right. So we're going to take this. And we're just going to kind of freeform it. Just put a little bit down on the plate. You can finish this with some fresh raspberries and fresh strawberries to finish the plate out if you like. Take a couple of these right through here. Set them right down through the center. I think we're going to try to fit five on here for us. They look absolutely delicious. They really these do. These are fun. Uh, the kids love them. I know adults that crave these. Uh, during, I can see why. You can, uh, during the uh, fall, you got great pumpkin flavors that you can put on them. Uh, a nice pumpkin sauce so or a bourbon sauce. Yes, these. these are so versatile. This is just a small little bit of what we can do with this. Mm -hmm. Such versatile batter and, and uh, seasoning mix that we can what do. What a great idea. And there's a simple. All right. Okay, so guys, these are our plates. We're going to start with dessert first. Here is our wild berry 
fritter dumplings, fritter dumplings, we're going to call them fritter dumplings. We'll call them fritter dumplings, we'll call them, <laughs> yes. And with our white chocolate sauce, here is our take on chicken and waffles. It's chicken and funnel cake with a honeyed, spicy gravy. And we got the funnel cakes on the bottom. And then we have our beautiful, beautiful uh, shrimp and grits with our brown butter bacon sauce. And thank you. And we can use that as our appetizer, that is our entree, and our dumplings for dessert. And that is more than just funnel cake. So we can use this funnel cake batter for a lot of different things, not just for funnel cakes anymore. We can use it for a, a breading. We can use it for a wonderful chicken and waffle style well, dish. Absolutely, yep. <laughs> and then you can also add it, whatever kind of berry or spice or fruit or whatever to it to make a lovely little dumpling. So make this batter up, make this, this breading up, keep it in your pantry, and you have something that's going to be quite versatile and you'll be able to use it in a lot of different places. So thank you. Thank you for joining me, Chris. Oh, no, my pleasure. And it's thank you fun. for joining us on this episode of Charlotte Cooks. If you want our recipes, go to our website at pbscharlotte.org and you can grab our recipes there. You can also send me an email. My email is Pamela, P-A-M-E-L-A dot Roberts, R-O-B-E-R-T-S at cpcc dot edu. I love to hear from you and please try it and let me know what you think. And we'll catch you next time on Charlotte Cooks. Thank you. Production of PBS Charlotte.